Her name is Steph Gabrielle, and she is an entrepreneur. She is an environmental scientist, and she is the founder of Ocean Zen. She has won a number of awards, including the Ethics and Sustainable Award, two years in a row, in 2016 and 2017. And she was a finalist for the Young Entrepreneur of the Year. I'd like to welcome Steph to this stage to talk about uh, what she's doing. Um, so my name is Stephanie Gabriel, I'm the environmental scientist and founder of Sustainable Swimmer Label Ocean Zen Bikini. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my sustainable journey and hopefully teach you um, sustainable practices that you can incorporate into your lifestyle. So um, it all began with me, I'll just pop my PowerPoint on real quickly. Nope, no PowerPoint? Yep, there we go, okay. Um, Okay, well it all started with me um, when I was 19 years old, so that was about 10 years ago. I was living in Sydney, and that's where actually where I'm originally from. And um, I was studying event management, and I thought that I wanted to be this corporate event manager. And I got a taste of it, and it was completely unfulfilling for me. So I decided to go travelling, and I ended up being away for three years. Um, during that time, I was very lucky to live on a beautiful island in the Caribbean. It's called Grand Cayman. And I landed this job working with wild stingrays. So part of my job was to literally handle and feed wild stingrays for tourism purposes. Um, I don't come from a background in marine conservation at the time. Um, living in Sydney, I never really gained much of a connection <coughs> with marine life before. So being, being able to travel, and to live in Grand Cayman really exposed me to this passion that I didn't even know I had. Um, I spent a year in Grand Cayman, and while I was there, I started to see the human impacts that we were having on the ocean. I could see all of the plastic that we were using, the plastic bottles, plastic bags, seriously affecting these beautiful stingrays. So through, um, through all this passion that I was gaining living in the Cayman Islands, um, it's essentially what brought me back home to Australia. I moved to the Sunshine Coast and I enrolled into university and studied a degree in environmental science. Now, when I left school, I actually left school after year 10, I got my school certificate and uh, I went to business college. And as I mentioned, I was so sure that I wanted to be an event manager. Well, if you'd asked me when I finished school if I would go to university, I would have said no. I had no desire to study again. So, you know, it's really interesting to look back and to see how having that break and travelling really led me onto the path that I was meant to be on. Um, I studied a degree in environmental science and marine conservation and through that experience as well, I was involved in some incredible research projects overseas. I was so lucky to live in the Galapagos Islands for six months, researching sea lions and sharks. But again, I was exposed to all of this plastic pollution that was happening. The Galapagos Islands are meant to be one of the most protected places on Earth. And when I got there, I could see that that was far from the truth. So through lots of passion and lots of research, I decided I wanted a voice for sustainability and I wanted to share what I was learning. So I launched Ocean Zen. Ocean Zen is a sustainable swimwear company, as I mentioned, and we use a fabric made from recycled plastic bottles and fishing nets from the ocean. Now I know that sounds very bizarre, um, it's a really incredible process. Um, there's a company in America, they collect all of the marine debris and then they take it all to a facility where it's cleaned and shredded and then recreated into a very fine yarn. That fine yarn then gets shipped to Italy where it's mixed with lycra to make it stretchy. So um, a couple of you have come over to the stall early and you've touched the fabric. It's really mind blowing because you can't actually tell the difference. It's completely sustainable and it's incredible that it's actually saving our oceans. Um, we're in a really amazing time right now because plastic pollution is becoming a, um, a hot topic. So plastic, a one plastic bag can take up to a thousand years to break up into smaller and smaller pieces. Um, what's really sad is that plastic is now entering our food, ch our food chain. <coughs> if you are a fish eater, um, which I am as well, but in very small portions, um, uh, fish actually mistaken uh, microplastics now as their food source. 
So now fish are actually full of plastic. So it's entering our food chain. Us eating, us eating fish is obviously, um, you know, we're essentially eating our own plastic now. So it is a social, uh, social issue and an environmental issue. Um, I've got a couple of points up there as well, just about how long plastic takes to break up and um, th that it takes five billion, sorry, that Australians use five billion plastic bags every year. Um, I do have a little sample here to show you, which is of, with the jug. So um, last year, I'll start with this. This looks like plastic, doesn't it? Yeah? It is actually made of vegetable starch. And I've just pulled off a little piece here. This will actually dissolve in hot water within about five minutes. Oh, not even five minutes. It's kind of already going. So this is a really innovative way to avoid plastic. And the sad thing is, is not many people know about this. It's a really new product on the market. Um, I don't manufacture this, but um, we use it at Ocean Zen. So there are so many amazing sustainable options that we can be using as consumers, but um, we, just don't, we just don't know about it. That's the problem. Um, so this is, as I mentioned, made from vegetable starch. It's called cassava. It's a CG and vegetable root vegetable. Um, and last year was a really big shift for me with plastic pollution. I actually headed up to... Uh, Chile Beach with a, a non-profit non organisation called Clean Coast Collective and we helped remove 7.1 tonnes of marine debris on a 6.7 kilometre stretch of beach which is not far at all and that took us five days. I've got a couple of statistics of the things that we found. Um, we found lots of toothbrushes, we found lots of plastic um, bottles and we also found uh, this. This looks like a, well this is a plastic bag um, this was tied into a knot, and you can actually see um, all of the tiny little fish bites around this. So fish have actually eaten through the plastic to get to whatever was inside of this plastic bag and thus entering our food chain again. We found lots and lots of these little plastic bags, um, and this was a really rude shock for me. I, this is when I really wanted to come back and share awareness for this, um, because even though we use a plastic bag once or twice, or we think that we're recycling it and reusing it, um, it somehow always ends up in either in landfill or in our oceans. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, yeah, so plastic free, living a plastic free lifestyle is very challenging. Um, I must admit, we, we live in a plastic society. There's no um, fully, there's no full way of escaping it. Um, there is an amazing challenge though, it's a global challenge. It's called Plastic Free July. Has anyone heard of Plastic Free July? Yeah, a couple of people. So Plastic Free July is a global movement. It's basically um, raising awareness for plastic pollution and it's a really fun way for people to get involved and challenge themselves to not use plastic for the whole month. Obviously the whole month um, is extreme for some, for some people. So there are other options as well. If you, if you were a regular coffee drinker, you could, you could pick one item and go a week without using plastic coffee cups. Um, and don't be, de don't be deceived by co coffee cups. The uh, cardboard lining is actually plastic on the inside. Um, so there's also some really amazing um, cup brands out there called the Keep Cup and there's a few others. So there's, there are alternatives to plastic. We just need to, um, to support those products. Plastic bags, plastic straws, plastic bottles and plastic co coffee cups are the four major plastic things that if you could remove them from your lifestyle as a global movement, we would be making such a powerful change. Um, also another really great thing is just, just to choose where you support or who you support with your dollar. Um, it's obviously very difficult to uh, sometimes shop um, instead of at you know, the major supermarkets, um, but these major supermarkets, they are not, they're not uh, there for our best, our best interest. Um, so it's always really great if you can support local farmers um, and there's also lots of plastic free alternatives, not buying in bulk, things like that as well. Um, so on that note, it's really important that, I know there are a couple of students here today, um, I just want to share that whatever your passion is, 
you have the opportunity to benefit this world in some way or another, whether that's environmentally or socially. Um, I would like to ask two people in here what their passion is, um, and then I'd love you to think about how you can potentially um, turn your passion into something that into something that's positive. So I'll ask two people who would like to share their passion with me. No? What, what's your passion? <laughs> I love bird watching. You love bird watching. That's amazing. So an, an amazing alternative that you could do, or not an alternative, but um, you know you could lead lead sustainable uh, bird watching tours or something, and you can use that opportunity to potentially educate people about these beautiful birds. Um, one million seabirds actually die annually from plastic ingestion. Um, so seabirds are suffering from plastic pollution. So that's a great way um, for you to share awareness and you know, benefit the environment in some way. Um, yeah, I've got 17 points up there, um, which basically talk about um, sustainable or ethical options that you can do to potentially benefit the world in some way. You could potentially um, save people with uh, third world countries, poorer countries, um, whether that's ocean conservation or environmental issues, um, education. There are so many ways that you can benefit the world. So whatever your passion may, whatever your passion may be, um, just have a think about how you can benefit the world with that. But on that note as well, if you don't know what your passion is yet, when I was in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It wasn't until I was 24 that I actually decided I wanted to go to university and study a degree. As I said, that is not something that I had ever even dreamed of in high school. So if you don't know what you want to do right now, that is also completely okay. Um, you can sit with that, go travel, open yourself up to so many amazing opportunities and you never know what you might fall in love with. So yeah, um, as you can see right now, um, it's quite small down the bottom there. You, you, you can actually drink this, but I wouldn't advise it. Um, but according to the company, they say that it is drinkable. <coughs> with that, with me, I actually, um, with all of these bags, because this is what the swimwear is actually packaged in, um, I actually, about once a week, I'll put all the bags in there, cook, cook it up like I'm cooking dinner, and then um, pour it into the garden. So that way, even if this does end up in the bin, it's not ending up in landfill or the ocean, even though it is, um, it is dissolvable. I, I would rather dissolve it myself um, than risk it ending up in the wild. So um, yeah, another option as well. Um, these are our recycled uh, stainless steel bottles. Um, another way that you can avoid plastic bottles as well. And yeah, I hope that everyone gained something really, um, really special today with my talk and I hope that you can try to live a more sustainable lifestyle because we're in a really amazing time right now and millennial consumers um, especially are becoming more conscious about their environmental footprint and you know, it, it's up to you guys. You guys are going to be saving our planet. When we look at our parents, they were the ones that used to use the glass milk bottles or my parents, maybe not your parents. Um, we, they used to use the glass bottles, so really in the last sort of 40 years, plastic pollution has completely taken over our earth. Um, so the new generation, it's up to you guys, the pressure's on to, to save the world. <laughs> thank you very much everyone. I, yeah, thank you.